from the campus of Piedmont International University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It's time for PIU Bruins Lady Basketball. Good evening, everyone. I'm Corey Glorson to bring you all the action here today as Piedmont International begins the final week of the regular season and a crucial tilt tonight against the Hawassi College Lady Tigers out of Tennessee. Piedmont sitting 5-9 and nine on the season, needing to win these final two games of their 2017-2018 campaign to make the regionals here beginning next week. Coming off of a big win over Mid-Atlantic Christian last night on this floor and now facing their final home game of this season against a team that is road tested and plays a ton, 15 and seven. Hawassi College comes in from Tennessee coming off of three games over the last four days. It is going to be a tall task here tonight for the Lady Bruins against a team that has done a lot of damage on the road away from the Madisonville campus. It's going to take a heroic effort here tonight for the Lady Bruins to keep these playoff hopes alive into the final week of the regular season. Let's take a moment here and pause for tonight's opening prayer and national anthem. Yeah, yeah. Low, low, low. Yeah. 360 in the contract. Never that. I just take the contact. I bring it back. I'm running on the fast break behind the back. Yeah, this that, this that, this that penny with yeah. the shack. If he's passing me the rock, you might not get it back. They never gave a hand, now they want to give me that. I don't know where you been. I got fear of God. Ain't no fear of man. These them air minios. Yeesh, need a pair of them. Man, I feel like magic. magic. LA, 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 I can't stand the traffic. West side for the vacation. Yeah, West, West Brook yeah. on the isolation. Yeah. So New York City got to keep it, Mickey keep Mano, uh. The bubble jacket with the pimpy wiggle camel, uh. From Argentina, it's a military issue. Uh. And Lord said, don't mix the people with the shit, so don't do it. Don't. I just do it off the backboard. Game winner, I'm the one they ask for. Magic. Winston-Salem, the final home game for the Lady Bruins of Piedmont International University. They take on Hawassi College today. Let's get you today's starting lineups for PIU, brought to you by Gateway Pharmacy of Kernersville. Well, it's a usual starting lineup for Piedmont. In the backcourt, it'll be the freshman guard, Ashley Lane, and the freshman guard, Amaya Scott, both running the show and taking turns. Lane, 5'7", out of Niceville, Florida. Amaya Scott, the freshman, 5'8", out of Concord. North Carolina. In the front court, the freshman Arian Rump, 5'10", out of Norcross, Georgia. She'll be joined up front by Monifa Engel, the junior out of Salisbury, North Carolina, 5'9", on the height. And then Zaniah Kessler, 6'0", six foot, foot, six foot sophomore, out of Franklin, Georgia, rounds out the starting five for Piedmont International University, brought to you by Gateway Pharmacy of Kernersville. For the Hawassi College Tigers, head coach by Megan Price, in the backcourt, the junior point guard, Ashley Roby out of Nashville, Tennessee, will lead the way. She'll be joined by senior forward, Niaja Holmes out of Macon, Georgia. Also in the starting five for Hawassi is Aaliyah, pa is Aaliyah Pittner, the junior out of Cleveland, Tennessee. And joined up there by the sophomore guard, Valerie Cheek out of Tolico Plains, Tennessee. And rounding out the starting five, it's Jalen Majors, the junior guard out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. A three-guard lineup for Hawassi College to start. A two-guard lineup for Piedmont with stronger and bigger size up in the front. It is going to be a contrast to Styles right off the shoot here. Caleb Money in his first season as PIU Lady Bruins head coach, closing out the home schedule here tonight. 
Piedmont wearing home white uniforms with the light blue numerals and lettering, black trim around those. Hawassi College in the road black uniforms with the burgundy letters and the gold numerals with the white with the yellow around the arm around the letter trim. We're just about set to tip things off here today as Kessler and Pittner will jump at center circle. It's won by Hawassi and they'll move from left to right on your radio dial computer screen. Cheek, right baseline, being double teamed, kicks it up top. Majors tries to fire down low. It's intercepted and stolen away by Rumpf. And an early turnover here for PIU. Ashley Lane will bring it up floor. Lane moves high left side. Now will send it cross court to Scott. Bounce right corner. Monifa Engel back up top. Kessler, extra pass left corner. Scott tees up a three, rolls it in. Amaya Scott, good start for her back in the starting lineup. After suffering an injury on Thursday, she came off the bench yesterday in the win over Mid-Atlantic Christian and is now on the board here in the starting lineup today. 3-0 Lady Bruins, 45 seconds into the contest today. Roby, right side for Cheek. Cheek, right wing, pulls up her dribble, now goes to the corner. Jalen Majors with the elbow, nearly has it stripped away. It will go right side as Cheek nearly steps out of bounds, drives baseline. Her pass underneath the bucket is poked out of bounds. And it will stay with Hawassi as Ashley Lane jumped in front of the feed. Early substitution right off the bat here for Megan Price as Haley Browning has checked in for Valerie Cheek. So it's one minute in on her first substitution. Inbound baseline intended for Majors. It's out of her hands and goes right to Rump. So back-to-back -back turnovers forced by this Lady Bruins defense right off the beginning here today. 3-0 PIU leads. Just over a minute gone here in the first quarter. Kessler right wing gets a screen, goes to the top. Left side for Scott, now Lane, corner three, air ball, rebound, pinballs around, loose and tracked down by Hawassi as Jalen Majors will secure it, and she'll bring it up floor herself. She gives to Roby, left side, tries to lob it down low, out of bounds, it's tipped, and it will stay with the Lady Tigers. As Monifa Angle was able to get under there, check that that was Rump again, who got a hand on that. Rump has been the receiver of two turnovers in a row here. Baseline left, inbounds for Hawassi, goes up top for Majors, stops at the free throw line, right corner, three on the way for Roby, back heel no good, rebound, kicks to the weak side, it's tracked down by Majors, a reset for Hawassi as Majors will drive right to the left, right to the bucket and bank it home. 3-2 the score as Hawassi's on the board for the first time, and now they'll go full court pressure here, PIU breaks it, Scott nearly travels, tries to go right corner for Kessler, it's tapped out of bounds by Browning, and it will stay with Piedmont, with 20 left on the shot clock. 8.07 to play in this first quarter. 3-2, the Lady Bruins are in front. Lane, quick inbounds up top for Angle. Now a bullet pass to Scott in the lane. Bumps off a one defender, puts up it high on the glass. No, gets her own rebound and puts it home. Amaya Scott with the first five points of the night for Piedmont. They lead by three, with two minutes gone here in this first quarter. Roby, the junior out of Nashville. We'll go right side, into the corner it goes. Aliyah Pittner around the horn, left side. Haley Browning back up top as the zone put on by PIU. And Owasi hasn't been able to break through the bucket just yet. They're lobs to the low post there for Holmes, trying to back down Angle. Her shot's no good. Rebound put back is up and no good. Majors couldn't finish it off, and Kessler finally rips down the board for the Bruins. Up by three, Rumpf brings it up floor, now peels away at the top of the key. We go cross court for Ashley Elaine, who had to save it from going over the back, right in front of the scores table. 7-14 remaining here in the first quarter. Rumpf deep in the left corner. To the free throw line, Kessler is wide open for the elbow jumper, rolls around and in. Zania Kessler off the nice feed from Rumpf in the corner, makes it 7-2 PIU. Three minutes old here in today's action. Ashley Roby for Hawassi to the left wing. Browning cross court and up top it goes Roby. Quick pass down low, Holmes can't get the hook shot to go over Rumpf. And Angle has the board for the Bruins. Good interior defense here by PIU working that zone in and then when the ball's been able to get down low into the paint, it's been a nice job by the size of PIU to close everything off. Rumpf at the elbow, kicks over Kessler, left corner three, short, and the rebound poked out of bounds, saved by Roby, but she's gonna be on the baseline as she went after the basketball. It's gonna stay with Piedmont with 6.20 remaining here in the first quarter. Yeah. 
Ashley Lane, left baseline inbounds, tries to go to the right corner, but it's poked out of bounds. Telegraphing that the entire way was Niaja Holmes. And we'll reset here with Lane still camped on the left baseline. Now looking to go up top, and she'll lob it over to Engle. Deep two on the way, top of the key. Nope, spins off to the left, knocked out of bounds. It'll be off of Lane and go to the Lady Tigers. Empty trip there for Piedmont, leading by five, seven to two. 6-16 remaining here in quarter number one. 15 and seven, the mark for Hawassi, a team without a conference. They play whomever they can, and they lack up a lot of games. The lob down low intended for Holmes just goes right to Rump again. That's the third turnover for Arian Rump defensively. Lane, the freshman out of Niceville, brings it up, goes right corner, gets it back from Angle. Amaya Scott has five of the seven for the Lady Bruins in the early going. Rumpf left corner, fires the three strong, and the rebound on the weak side, tracked down. Ashley Lane's got to put him up off the glass, no good. On the back heel, she gets the rebound again, and back up top to Rump as the rebound was tipped up by Kessler, and Lane wound up with it, so a third opportunity on this possession here for Piedmont. Kessler left corner. Kessler setting up the offense from over there, goes cross court for Lane, right wing, fires a deep three, got it! Nothing but net for Ashley Lane. She was well behind the arc for that one. That's the second triple of the night for Piedmont and a 10-2 Bruins advantage. Five minutes to play here in quarter number one. Aliyah Pitt for Roby. Back to Pittner, left wing, closed out nicely by, by Kessler, winds up with the hand of Scott, and Scott loses it in the forecourt, and a foul is called. Haley Browning ran into Scott as she hit the deck, and it looks like Amaya is going to get whistled for a personal foul, and she will. That's the first on either side. So the basketball back to Hawassi with 4.53 remaining here in quarter number one. Charletta Hackett checks in for substitution for Piedmont. She'll grab Monifa Engel. Shamanique Pearson is also in for Hawassi. Left side, Majors fires a three off the back rim, no good. Rebound controlled by Rump. She's been everywhere down low here tonight. Coach Kayla Money said before the game to me, she, he thinks Arian's going to have a terrific night here tonight. She's not on the board offensively, but she has made her presence felt defensively. Rump has it top of the key to Scott left wing. To Kessler, right side. She'll fire a three. Too strong in the rebound. Rump fighting for the offensive board. She has it, works her way out of there, hits the deck. Still on the ground. Now a jump ball tie-up's going to get called, and it will go to Piedmont as Rumpf came in and battled that rebound away between two Lady Tigers, then hit the deck hard. Eventually, Jalen Majors dove down to force the jump ball, and the Bruins will reset with 25 on the shot clock, leading by eight. Lob up top, Hackett at the elbow, goes to lane, left wing, down low rump, into the lane, hook shot for Arian, no good, too strong off the glass, rebound on the far side, tracked down by Haley Browning for Hawassi. And she'll give to Roby who pushes. Roby lobs down low underneath the bucket for Holmes. She goes up and fouled. She was caught too far under the basket, but put up the shot anyway and was able to draw contact. And she'll head to the line for two. That's the second quick foul on Scott, so she's going to have to come out of the ball game. Two team fouls for Piedmont. And Hawassi has yet to commit an infraction tonight. Angle's going to have to check back in, and she will likely grab Amaya. Niaja Holmes, who was fouled on that, working. Looks like she is resetting her contact in her right eye. I know the feeling. She puts the right contact back in. Now she has to shoot two free throws. Just one field goal on the board for Hawassi. That was a driving bucket off the glass by Jayla Majors pretty early on. But ever since then, it has been at PIU. First free throw is up off the back rim and kicks aside. Imagine trying to reset your contract and setting and firing for two free throws. How do you think your vision's feeling after that? That one's too strong. Fight for the rebound on the baseline. Saved by Angle, she'll find Ashley Lane. 0 for 2 at the line. And now Lane drives to the paint, puts up the floater, no, rebound, Hackett pushed from behind, and it will go out of bounds and stay with Piedmont. 
Looked like there could have been a foul called there on Hawassi. Instead, it'll just be a reset of possession for PIU with 3.45 to play in the first quarter. Baseline right inbounds. Kessler has it left corner. Kessler crossover dribble. Nearly loses the handle. Go up top and Angles trying to track it down. It kicks off for Roby. She kicks it into the forecourt and kicks it square out of bounds along the baseline. So we go back to Piedmont, but now the full length of the floor to work with 20 seconds remaining on the shot clock. 10-2 our score. Lady Bruins have been in front from the beginning. Hawassi trying to crank up the defensive pressure a little bit here over the last couple of minutes. And Ashley Lane wants to slow it down. She's still waiting to grab the inbounds as it rolls towards the midcourt stripe. Finally picks it up and crosses the timeline. Sherletta Hackett back over to Lane. Baseline right for Angle. And her pass intended for Hackett is stolen away. Went right into the waiting arms of Holmes. Hawassi will counter. Dribble drive, Majors goes left baseline. She goes up hard and fouled even harder. Hackett's going to peg her on the drive. That will send Majors to the free throw line. Hackett gets her second personal. Check that first personal. Three on the team. 3.19 to go here in quarter number one. Majors has been the only offense so far here for Hawassi as she sees that free throw kick around and off. Struggles continue for the Lady Tigers on the right side of the floor. That is more than okay with head coach Kayla Money. Second one. In and out. Rebound fought for. It's picked up by Pearson. Reset off the glass and good. Shamanique Pearson gets the second bucket of the day for the Lady Tigers and makes it a 10-4 game. Lane over the line. Hackett right elbow to Angle. Right side lane, right wing three, off the front of the iron, no, and Pearson skies for the rebound. Shamanique Pearson, six foot, and a big body. She's going to be the biggest person on the floor when she's out there. The floater from Roby, no good, and she comes down awkwardly on her right ankle, and she hits the deck hard and cannot put much weight on her right leg. I wonder if she came down on a foot when she released that floater. The junior out of Nashville is laboring and getting help from the Piedmont trainer. She cannot put any weight at all on her right leg. She's being helped off the floor. She went up for a floating drive from the left side. You wonder if she came down on a foot and twisted her ankle. She will get tended to on the far side of the left bench. We hope that she's all right. Piedmont basketball here with 2.41 to play in this opening quarter. 10 for the Bruins lead. Hackett corrals it, drives, stops. Eight-footer is blocked by Pearson. She winds up with it. And Hawassi counters. Right wing, Haley Browning bounces it down low for Holmes. Holmes off the glass. She's fouled. Kessler is going to get her second. And that's four quick team fouls here as Hawassi is now broken through that initial zone put on by PIU, and now they're starting to get to the bucket with regularity. That one, that first free throw for Holmes, went halfway down, rolled around and out. Check that, that's the first foul on Kessler. Charletta Hackett comes out. Second one on the way, no good. Pearson, the offensive board, backs down. A Bruin, she puts up the shot, no. Rebound put back, no. And it's finally hauled in by Alicia Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch just came in, and she gets that defensive board there. 0 for 2 at the line for home. She's 0 for 4 already on the day. Sophia Barnes in for the first time. She has it right corner, goes to Angle. 2.04 to play in quarter number one, 10 for the Bruins lead. Lane top of the key, nice cut to Angle, and she lays it in off the window. Backdoor cut down the left baseline. Angle streaked through to the bucket. And Lane split the defense and bounced it right to her. Nice feed and a nice bucket. So 12 to 4 margin. Hawassi to my right. Kathleen Almar in for the first time. She'll give way to Browning. She drives left side, puts it off out the glass, and good. And the foul. Count the bucket here as Cumberbatch gets whistled for the foul. Browning will head to the line for the and one. Mackenzie Broadway in for the first time for Hawassi. She'll grab Niaja Holmes. 
as they're still looking at Ashley Roby on the far side of the bench. To complete the three-point play, Browning gets the free throw. 12-7 the score with 140 to go in this first quarter. Five on the floor for Piedmont. It's Lane, Cumberbatch, Engel, Barnes, and Kessler. Cumberbatch with the free throw line to Engel, high to the right. Engel picks up her dribble. Lane goes to get it left wing. Ashley Lane to Kessler. Kessler on the perimeter. Engel just fires the right wing jumper in and out for three. Rebound. Oh, Kessler all alone for the easy putback. Rebound popped out to the right from where the shot came from. It was all Zanaya Kessler there for the board. The easy bank shot. She's got four, and the lead is seven. 14 to seven with one minute to go. Right wing three on the way is nothing but nylon for Kathleen Alomar. First triple of the day for the Tigers. Makes it a four-point game. As we take under 45 seconds to play. Lane drives, left of the lane, leaves it off for Kessler, closed off nicely. Now Kessler jump stop deep two as her footer on the line misses everything. Cumberbatch tries to secure the rebound on the far side, and it rolls off of her and off the baseline. So a turnover there for PIU with a four-point lead. 40 seconds to play, a 10-second differential between the shot and game clock. And Hawassi will try and cut this to a possession here before the quarter break. Valerie Cheek back in for the Tigers. She'll run the show with a Roby injury. Up top, Broadway goes to the right wing. Haley Browning to Broadway. Swing it left side. Alomar, another three on the way. That one's good. Back-to-back -back triples for Kathleen Alomar. It's a one-point game, but 20 seconds to go. Last shot time here for Piedmont. They got to break the full court pressure being put on by the Tigers. Lane finally gets it across the timeline. Goes right corner pass, nearly deflected for Rum. Now she'll drive baseline off the glass. Good, and the foul. Arian Rump did a little bit of an up fake in the corner for three, and that committed the defense. So Rump drove the baseline, got the hoop and the harm with 5.8 to play in the first. She'll look for the three-point play. And she can't get it. It's short off the front rim. Rebound to Hawassi with four, with three, with two. Half-court heave at the buzzer for Cheek falls astray. And the first quarter ends with a three-point Lady Bruin lead. 16-13. We go to the second here on the Bruin Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. Hawassi 16-13 after one. Corey Glor back with you. Mason Cox, the producer engineer here today. The final home game for the Lady Bruins against the Hawassi College Lady Tigers. The right corner three is up and good for Haley Browning. That ties the game right off the bat here to start the second quarter. Now more full court pressures. Lane double team in the backcourt. Then she's going to get bumped and foul. Looks like they'll get Valerie Treak with the personal. That's just the first foul. Check that second foul. Hawassi is committed in this game, the first of this quarter. Amaya Scott with two personal fouls will grab Cumberbatch and check back into the lineup. So it'll be Scott, Kessler, Engel, Rumpf, and Lane, the starting five on to essentially start off this second quarter. Backcourt inbounds will go to Rumpf. She'll bring it across the line to the right. And Lane will now come and receive it at the Bruin logo at center court. Lane setting the stage with 30 seconds gone in the frame, tied at 16. Lane left wing, cross court Scott. Dribble drive, backs up, step back jumper, back heel, back heel no good. Rebound, Rump fighting for it, knocks it out of bounds. It'll go to Hawassi. 
And they will shoot for the lead for the first time today. Tigers starting to uncork some three balls here of late. Their last three shots they've hit from the field have been from downtown. Mackenzie Broadway, the sophomore at the top of the key, goes left side for Valerie Cheek. Bounces it right side. Niaja Holmes corrals it, being guarded by Lane. That's a mismatch. Cheek over there. Cheek at the free throw line, tries to go left corner. It's batted out of there, volleyball style by Scott, but it winds up in the hands of Hawassi, right corner. Browning fires down low for Holmes. Holmes with two on the shot clock, puts it up off the window, bounces it in. Holmes gets her first bucket as the defense did all they could to hold Hawassi off the board there, but it just couldn't come to fruition. Now a turnover in the backcourt, that full court pressure working there as Valerie Cheek has it, goes to the bucket, her layup's no good, and the rebound cleared up the floor. Lane has it stripped out of her hands, gets it back and secures it. Loses one, loses two and three to the free throw line. Kessler for three, no good. And the rebound tapped around. Scott corrals on the weak side. Scott, elbow jumper, rolls around and off. She hits the deck hard, no foul called. Slow to get up. And the rebound, Hawassi O'Connor with Cheek. Cheek stops and pops for eight off the glass and good. Valerie Cheek with a bucket here. And that's seven straight here to start the second quarter for Hawassi, leading 20 to 16, two minutes gone. Kessler tries to go to the top of the key and it's swatted out of bounds by Kathleen Adlamar. Side court inbounds here for Piedmont. The pressure has really been cranked up now for the Lady Tigers defensively. And Piedmont has had some trouble locking it down. Lane to Rumpf right wing. And a whistle and a traveling violation on Arian Rumpf. She didn't move much at all on the right wing, but she must have slid that pivot foot just a touch. And a turnover for the Lady Bruins and a 7-0 hole to start this second quarter. Broadway, right corner for Cheek. She'll lob one cross court for Alomar. Back up top, Mackenzie Broadway. Alomar bumped by Lane, no call. Her pass cross court is deflected by Kessler, winds up in the hands of Rump. Turnover's traded here. Rumpel is bringing it across the timeline herself and shovel off to Scott, who's better handling the basketball. Gets a screen from Rump at the top of the key. She has the ball stripped, but it's fouled. Valerie Cheek thought she got all ball and said she got the arm of Amaya Scott. Second on Cheek. That's the second on the team. And a side court inbounds for Ashley Lane. Goes to Rumpel, low block. Spins to her left, puts it off the window, and good. Rump's got four. And Piedmont finally on the board in the second quarter. It's 20 to 18. Three minutes ticked by here in quarter number two. Mackenzie Broadway left wing, pulls up her dribble, goes to Cheek left baseline, steps inside, fires a 10-footer. No rebound pulled down by Majors, and the putback is blocked. And Piedmont will counter, Scott has it. Scott nearly double dribbles into the lane. Floater, tough shot, got it. Scott never really had firm possession of that one, but when she did, she didn't waste any time letting a shot go, and she gets the teardrop to go to tie the game at 20. Six and a half to go until halftime. Cheek for the Lady Tigers goes to Broadway right corner. Swing it around left side. Kathleen Alomar, top of the key, goes to Cheek, left corner, fires the deep three, in and out, rebound poked up in the air, it's corralled by Hawassi, a reset. Holmes goes back to the bucket from the right side, her shot partially deflected by Engel, and here comes Lane. Lane pushes two on three, Euro step in the lane, runs into one, puts up the shot, no good, no foul, Lane gets the rebound, over to Scott for three, no good, short, rebound, Kessler puts it back up, in, and the foul! Terrific effort there for Piedmont on the offensive glass. And Megan Price is irate about the lack of a foul call. The head coach for Hawassi was livid with the lack of action by the officials that she presumed that something Piedmont did was illegal. So now the officials are conferring. The shot is on the board for Kessler. She should head to the line for a three-point play. But now the officials are going to the scores table. 
The foul's on Broadway, her first, and the team's fourth already, just four minutes, four seconds in. They might have called a technical on Megan Price as Kessler is all on the free throw line now. And they did indeed. The official want to make sure that Kessler is the one that Kayla Money wants at the free throw line, and he gives a thumbs up. So the head coach for the Lady Tigers is teed up. Free throw up and good for Kessler. She'll shoot the technicals first and then complete the three-point play ideally. Second technical. Off the front of the iron, no good. The sophomore out of Franklin, Georgia, one for two in the technicals. And now everyone will come back to the lane to complete this three-point play opportunity. It will only be Lady Tigers on the block. Piedmont will get it set up defensively. Looking for a four-point trip on this journey. And got it. So two for three at the free throw line for Kessler. She completes the three-point play and splits the technicals. Makes it a four-point Piedmont lead with 5.50 to play in this opening half. 24-20 our score. Cheek right corner. Cheek up top, her pass intended for Browning, nearly stolen away by Kessler. Haley will corral it. Haley left wing, bounces it down low in between the legs of Holmes, loose on the paint. It's loose out there. Holmes and Rump go for it. And it's a jump ball tie up. It'll go to Piedmont. A bullet pass from the left wing that went right between the wickets of Holmes. And then Rump's able to grab her paws on that basketball and force the turnover. After a 7-0 start for Piedmont, check that for Hawassi to start this quarter. It's an 8-0 run fear for the Piedmont Lady Bruins and make it a 10-0 run as Scott for the teardrop from the left elbow makes it 26-20. Approaching five minutes to play in this first half. Lob down low for Holmes, low block. Working on Rump, puts it up off the glass. No, but she's fouled. She'll head to the free throw line. That's the first foul on Piedmont here in this half. That'll go on Rumpf. It's just the first on Arian. The freshman out of Norcross, Georgia. Holmes is 0 for 4 at the free throw line in the first quarter. She hits her first attempt here, the second. Makes it 26-21. 5.07 remaining in this first half. In and out on the second with a rebound for Broadway. A lot of offensive boards here for, for the Lady Tigers as Cheek drives on the left side and she runs into a wall and bumps down and foul. That'll be the second on Zania Kessler. Two quick team fouls on Piedmont. That'll check Kessler out for likely the rest of the half as Alicia Cumberbatch comes back in. Baseline left inbounds here for Hawassi. As a lob up top is stolen away by Scott. Scott two on three breaks. Scott right side goes right to the bucket. Short on the attempt as pressure came from behind. And Hawassi will counter with Jalen Majors. Majors crossover dribble down the lane. Runs into one. It's an offensive foul. Cumberbatch and Rumpf both stood their ground and took the charge. You can pick whoever you'd like. The receiving end of that, they both hit the deck. And it's an offensive foul on the break. Piedmont up by five with 4.52 remaining in the second quarter. More four-court pressure for the Lady Tigers as Cumberbatch has it stolen out of her hands at the timeline. Cheek drives, puts up the tough shot, deflected. Right into the hands of Arian Rumpf as Scott got her paw on it. And Kayla Money calling si signals from the sideline. Scott will bring it up slowly. She'll go to Cumberbatch. Onifa Engel left wing will just fire the jumper flat-footed, and that's not exactly what Kayla Money was looking for. Missed everything and goes out of bounds. 4.25 remaining in the second. Valerie Treat comes out, and Ashley Roby back in. She twisted her ankle late in the first quarter, so good to see Ashley back out there. Doesn't feel it right now. She might feel that tomorrow. Broadway, way up high to Roby. Right wing. Haley Browning bounces it, looking for Majors, and jumping in front of it was Angle. Tried to get the pass, she could not, but then rolling to the bucket, Majors just carried the basketball. So a break there for Piedmont after the gamble from Angle didn't work. It forces a turnover almost, in, almost intangibly. And Piedmont up by five with four minutes to play here in the half. Scott drives, right side, bump foul. The shot falls away. 
And Amaya to the free throw line. That's the fifth on Hawassi, so Piedmont will shoot the rest of the way. Foul on Nyasia Holmes, her first. Scott to the line for two. She's got nine on the day. And cannot get the bounce on free throw number one. Scott leads everybody with nine. Kessler with eight right behind. Second one. No good. Rebound off to Holmes. 0 for 2 at the line for Amaya. Lead stays at five for the Lady Bruins as both teams came out shooting and firing offensively to start the quarter. Now they've cooled down a little bit. Major the free throw line triple teamed and she's bodied and fouled. That'll go on Ashley Lane. Team foul number three for Piedmont. Owasi with possession here. Roby comes to get it left wing, goes cross court, corner three on the way is up and good for Haley Browning. That's her second three of the day. She's up to nine. And it's 26-24. Cumberbatch, check that rump, has it stolen away from behind, is coming to go pick it clean was Browning. And now Roby brings it up. Left side, Majors steps inside the arc, goes to Roby left corner, long cross court feed. Closing out nicely on Browning. Now up top for three is good. Jalen Majors for the triple, and that's the first lead of the day for Hawassi. 27-26, timeout Caleb Money. As Piedmont has gotten sloppy here to end the first quarter in these first few minutes of the second. And a lot of turnovers have been forced here by this Hawassi defense. And it has shot the Tigers into the lead for the first time today with 3.17 remaining in this opening half. It has been a seesaw quarter that saw Hawassi open on a 7-0 run, only to see Piedmont have a 10-0 run of their own. But since then, it has been a quick 6-0 burst on a couple of three balls, one by Browning and one by Majors. And the Lady Tigers have a one-point advantage here. Hawassi is showing full court pressure again. Lane will get it to Rumpf, back to Lane. And cross court near side for Scott. Drives to the paint, tries to split the D and bounce it over to Cumberbatch, streaking to the bucket. Kicks off of a Tiger and out of bounds. Baseline right inbounds. Lane will do the honor. She'll trigger up top to Cumberbatch. Nearly travels, getting it. Goes back to Lane, right corner. Being double teamed. Goes to Rump. Rolls to the bucket off the window. Off the front of the iron. No. Rebound comes down. Angle puts it up. No. Rebound loose on the ground. And it's eventually stolen away. Majors will counter for Hawassi up by one. Jalen Majors to the bucket. She puts up the shot. Late foul call. She lost the handle, but she was bumped. And she'll head to the line for two. Lane again with the foul. That's her second in the last couple of possessions. And they will call that. That should be a shooting foul, and it is. One of the officials is ready to trigger near on the baseline. They actually called it on Scott. And that's even worse here for Piedmont, as that's the third on Amaya. That'll get Kessler off the bench. Free throw around and off for Majors. The free throw game has been problematic for Hawassi here tonight. Kessler back in, so a little bit bigger lineup here for Kayla Money. Charletta Hackett back in as well to join Rump, Cumberbatch, and Lane. Second one is good. One for two at the line for Majors, 28-26 Hawassi. 2.53 to play. Tigers again cranking up the pressure. And Lane will bring it up right-hand alleyway. Arian Rumpf, left corner, Kessler for three, short. Rebound off of Cumberbatch, goes right back to Kessler, but she has it stripped out of her hands. Loose on the ground at the left side. Jump ball is going to get called. Possession will go to the Tigers. Owasi very active with the hands here, especially after those first couple of minutes. They're jumping into passing lanes and really catching the Lady Bruins napping at times. 28-26 Tigers, two and a half to play in this first half. Quick pass down low, Holmes, turnaround jumper, pushes it up, no good, and Lane clears it away for Piedmont. Will bring it up floor, across the timeline, nearly loses it, but gets it back, stops the right wing. 
Lane brings it right to the near side, high, and then she's bumped, and she is fouled. A little tic-tac foul there on Haley Browning that'll send Lane to the free throw line. Hawassi's into the bonus. Next foul will put Piedmont there as well. So an opportunity to tie the game up here for Ashley Lane at the charity stripe with 2.07 to play. First one is good for the freshman. Shamanique Pearson comes in. She'll grab Niaja Holmes. As a second, second personal foul on Haley Browning, she'll stay in. Lane to tie the game. Got it. She's got five. All square at 28 here in Winston. Two minutes to play in this opening half. Roby for Hawassi to Broadway, high up top for Majors. Pearson just going to launch a left wing three. He'll take that shot all day if you're Caleb Money. The rebound cleared by Cumberbatch for the Bruins. 145 remaining, tied at 28. Arian Rumpf has it right wing. Looking to go to Kessler at the free throw line. She's bodied up and closed out by Browning, so Rumpf is going to take it herself along the baseline, tries to put it up over Pearson. She cannot get it to go. It falls in the waiting arms of Majors. Now Jalen will counter, quick down the floor, and her pass intended for Browning just scampers out of bounds. So with 127 to play, Piedmont will get another crack to break this tie and jump back in front. Cumberbatch out, Angle back in. So it's for the starting five, but Charlotta Hackett is in place of Amaya Scott. A rump trying to get across the timeline, spins it over to Lane, now over to Hackett. She'll fire the right wing jumper and a whistle and a travel as Hackett just took an extra step and turns it over. These two a little bit ragged here to close out the first half. Majors, Pearson, quick pass to Roby. Floater good off the window from the left side. Quick pass from the left corner. And Ashley Roby's on the board for the first time. Shoots Hawassi in front, 30 to 28, under a minute to go. Long feed across the court, intended for Lane. Just goes right into the Hawassi bench. Angle overshot the point guard. And that's three turnovers in a row for the Lady Bruins here with this game all tied up. They had a couple opportunities to grab the lead, and they've coughed it up. Now Hawassi shoots for a two-possession advantage with 45 seconds remaining on the game clock. Majors right corner, deep jumper, no good. Pearson corrals the rebound, elbow jumper, left side off the window, no, off the head of Majors and out of bounds. That's two jumpers that Pearson has taken over the last minute or so that I don't think Megan Price has been looking for. Pearson probably should have just backed that one back out and started with a fresh shot clock. And now Piedmont with another opportunity here. Baseline inbounds goes to the timeline for Hackett. She'll hand it off to Rump, and Rump will bring it across from the backcourt. There's about a four-second differential shot clock and game clock. Piedmont down two, 20 on the shot clock. Angle has it right side, goes to... Kessler driving from the elbow, tries to put it up from behind the backboard, and it takes off the back of the backboard and out of bounds. She was pushed along the baseline, but that's not a shot you should be taking there if you're Zania. Walled off nicely by Roby and others. And Kessler just trying to force the issue too much. So with 14.6 to play, last shot time for Hawassi up by two. Roby between the rings to Majors with eight, left corner. Up fake from Browning, she drives baseline, puts up the jumper good with four seconds remaining. Four point lead for the Lady Tigers, and that will be how the half closes out. A lackluster close to the first half for PIU. And they will head to the locker room here, down four to Hawassi, 32 to 28 after leading much of the way here in that first half. Stay tuned, we'll take a look at the halftime numbers and we'll reset this first half gets you ready for the second. Coming up next as Hawassi leads Piedmont 32-28 to on your home for Bruins basketball, the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. 
Over the past few years, Piedmont International University has been moving up the ladder in both state and national rankings in a variety of categories. I am excited to announce yet another award as Piedmont was recently recognized for having one of the top 10 best online master's degrees in leadership in the entire United States. Other universities in the top 10 list include schools like Johns Hopkins University, uh, Gonzaga University. An award like this does not come without an excellent curriculum, outstanding faculty, affordable tuition, and flexible online delivery that utilizes cutting-edge innovation and maximizes the use of technology and the internet. Piedmont's faculty are noted for their professional guidance and instruction as well as their relational care for each and every student. Our students are the most important ingredient to the success of our leadership programs. And graduates of these programs are doing amazing things, as many have been recognized for their, uh, their exceptional leadership as school administrators, ministry leaders, uh, medical practitioners, military personnel, pastors, entrepreneurs, business leaders, allow me to share just a few examples of what some of our leadership graduates are doing. The list includes the CEO of a major automobile manufacturing factory here in the United States, the chancellor of a nationally known public university, the national HR director for a major grocery store chain, the administrators of a number of significant schools, and pastors of many key significant churches. Our graduates are demonstrating outstanding leadership in key roles across the country and all around the world. And we couldn't be more proud. This that penny with yeah, the shack. If he's passing me the rock, you might not get it back. They never gave a hand, now they wanna give me that. I don't know where you been. I got fear of God, ain't no fear of man. These them air minios, yeesh, need a pair of them. Ooh, LA, 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 man, I feel like magic. magic. LA, 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 I can't stand the traffic. West side for the vacation. Yeah, West, West, Brook, yeah. gonna isolation. Yeah. So New York City got to keep it, me keep man, no, uh. The bubble jacket with the pippy winkle camo, uh. From Argentina, it's a military issue, uh. And Lloyd said don't mix the pitbull with the shit, so don't do it. I just do it off the backboard. Game winner, I'm the one they ask for. Magic. here in Winston-Salem, the campus of Piedmont International University as the Lady Bruins trailing Hawassi 32-28 here at halftime. Corey Glorback with you from atop the gym 
here in Winston-Salem. A bit of a strange affair between those two in the first 20 minutes as Piedmont really controlled the pace and the tempo in quarter number one, jumped out to an early 10-2 lead and eventually took a lead into the second quarter. But Hawassi came out of the second quarter on fire, starting a 7-0 run, eventually took a 20-16 lead in the first couple of minutes. But then Piedmont countered with a 10-0 run of their own and took a six-point lead. But ever since then, Hawassi has kind of gained control back of this one, forced a lot of Lady Bruins turnovers, and they have jumped in front to a 32-28 to margin here as we sit at halftime. It has been at times fast-paced, at times sloppy, but also some sharp shooting from beyond the arc, particularly from the Lady Tigers, who have drained five threes in that first half. Piedmont had that uncooked, had that cooking in the first quarter, but shooting really slumped in that second frame. So we'll see what Kayla Money has up his sleeve to try and solve the offensive woes. A lot of times, Hawassi playing in the backcourt, full court pressure, just preventing any sort of offensive set from getting ready. And that forced the Bruins into doing some things that they aren't too terribly comfortable with. And it showed there through portions of that second quarter and have allowed the Lady Tigers out to this four point lead here at halftime. We'll take a look at the first half numbers after this 32 to 28, Hawassi in front of Piedmont International on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Yeah, yeah. Low, low, low. Yeah. 360 in the contract, never that. I just take the contact, I bring it back. I'm running on the fast break behind the back. Yeah, this that, this that, this that penny with yeah, the shack. If he's passing me the rock, you might not get it back. They never gave a hand, now they want to give me that. I don't know where you've been. I got fear of God, ain't no fear of man. At least them air mini yeah, need a pair of them. Ooh, LA, 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 man, I feel like magic. LA, 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 I can't stand the traffic. West side for the vacation. Yeah, West, West, Brook on yeah, the isolation. Yeah. So New York City gotta keep it, me keep man, oh, uh. The bubble jacket with the pippy, wink with camo, uh. From Argentina, it's a military issue. Uh. And Lord said, don't mix the pippo with the shit, so don't do it. Go. I just do it off the backboard. Game winner, I'm the one they ask for. Magic. Hawassi College 32, Piedmont International 28 at halftime as we inch towards the start of half number two in Winston-Salem. Corey Glore back with you to take a look at the first half scoring numbers for this one. We'll start with Piedmont with Amaya Scott leading the way with nine points, but she also has three personal fouls, something to keep an eye on in these first couple of moments in quarter number three. Zanaya Kessler with eight points in this one. She had a big four-point trip in the early stages of the second quarter after hitting an and one, but also getting a technical when head coach Megan Price for Hawassi was not pleased with the officiating in that particular sequence. She had two of her three free throws, had a four point trip. She's second in line with eight points. Ashley Scott with five points. Next in line for the Lady Bruins, Arian Rumpf with four, and then a bucket for Monifa Engel as well. Sophie Barnes, Charletta Hackett, Alicia Cumberbatch have all played in this one, but have yet to hit the score sheet. Hawassi being led by Haley Browning. She's the only one in double figures in this contest. She has 11 points with two triples to go alongside that. Two triples also for Kathleen Alomar. That constitutes her six points. Six points as well for Jalen Major. She also has a triple under her belt. Three points for Niasha Holmes. She, hers came in an and one opportunity. And then a couple of buckets for Ashley Roby 
for Shamanique Pearson and Valerie Cheek as well. Aliyah Pittner has played, as has Mackenzie Broadway. They have not scored in this contest. 32-28, the Lady Tigers of Hawassi in front of the Lady Bruins here at Piedmont International. Second half is on the way here on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. This program is unique in that it, it addresses three key leadership areas, organizational management, educational administration, and ministry administration. I would say the payoff is in ways that I never imagined. I never thought I would have such a supportive network. I never thought I would meet such great people who were at different points in their life. I mean, you can be sitting next to someone who's the CEO, and you sit next to people who are doctors. You also have sit next to people who are stay-at-home moms who have decided to go back to school. It has enriched me in ways I just never thought I, I, a PhD program would. I have a nuclear engineering technology bachelor's degree. I got an MBA from a secular school, and I knew that there was a whole Christian aspect of leadership. You read the books about Nehemiah, David, uh, Christ himself. And so I wanted to build that into my learning and knowledge. So I started looking for a Christian college. Piedmont comes across my computer, and they're on the top of all these lists, best this, top that, top 25, top. And I said, okay, this school seems to have a reputation for academic excellence. The professors, the relationships we're building, and the leadership program is second to none. I'm able to use every single class I've taken in my business, and my business has grown. Not only my business, but I'm able to do community development and train other leaders, young leaders, middle-aged leaders, you know, older leaders, and then I'm able to pass on leadership abilities and skills, you know, to other people. This program has a number of key strengths. Depending on which concentration, whether it's education or business or, or ministry, because it's a terminal degree, a PhD, it opens doors of opportunity. God can use this program in so many different ways. In pastoral ministry, it can open doors to greater opportunities to share Christ in, in different contexts. In, in organizational management, it opens doors to new leadership positions. Some, for many of our students, that's, that's been their, their story. And in educational administration, it has done the same as well. Since I've been in the program, um, the flexibility of the schedule, because I've, I had to relocate from one end of the country to the other. I had to go to China for two adoptions. Uh, last year, my daughter had open heart surgery. So we've been able to work around that. PIU students, they walk the talk. The professors, they walk the talk. So they lead by example, and therefore their students just emulate and lead by example in the communities they come from. It's just that simple. To know that not only are my professors top notch, not only do they know, you know, everything in their field, they're leaders in their field, they're knowledgeable, they're guiding you, they're praying for you. And to know that makes all the difference in the world. It's cost effective, it got the goal of having the Christian aspect brought into leadership and how that fits all together, and then the staff support. But if you make the decision and you decide to come, it's the best decision you'll ever make and you will not be the same afterwards. I knew I had made the right decision. Cox, our producer engineer here tonight on the broadcast. Final home game for the Lady Bruins needing to win here tonight and grab a win Monday night at Appalachian Bible College to earn their spot into the postseason beginning next week. They'll need a come from behind effort here in these final 20 minutes to try and make Monday a win and in scenario for head coach Caleb Money. It'll be the starting five on the floor for PIU to start off the second half. They'll have the basketball move from left to right. 
Ashley Lane, Zaniah Kessler, Amaya Scott, Monifa Engel, and Arian Rumpf will be on the floor here for the Lady Bruins. Lane with the basketball, bounces left side for Kessler at the wing. Up top for Engel, back to Lane, coming to get it from around the court. She has her right wing now, looking to get down low. No one's open, so let's fire a three. Got it, whoa! Makes something out of nothing for Ashley Lane there. She was looking to get the ball down low on the block, and instead she just drilled the triple right off the bat. And Piedmont's within one, 32 to 31. A whistle and a stoppage right in front of the Hawassi bench on the far sideline as one of the officials, I think there's a little bit of moisture over there. And he wants that cleaned up a little bit after the pre-halftime or the pre-second half huddle put on by Megan Price's girls. A little bit of cleanups needed. And Kayla Money, head coach, and do everything, man. Well, oh, it looks like a curler out there. Look at that sweeping technique for Kayla Money. Oh, you missed a spot. You got it. Nope, over there, over there. The Lady Tigers are orchestrating the Piedmont head coach on how to sweep. And a job well done by head coach Kayla Money. Now there's going to be some messes the new dad's going to have to clean up over the next couple of years, you feel, with the young one in tow. And now we're just about set to go. One of the officials throws a nice moisture-soaked towel over to Caleb Money as well. He'll put it behind his chair. And now Hawassi with their first possession of the half, up by one, 32 to 21. Aliyah Pittner over to Ashley Roby, right side for Cheek, starting five on the floor as well here for Hawassi. As Roby dribble drive, top of the key. Goes to the right side, Majors. Now Roby, left corner. Cheek drives on the baseline, stops, leaves it off home, spins, nearly travels. Right wing, three ball on the way. Open jumper is good for Jalen Majors. That's the second time that Hawassi has used every ounce of that shot clock and gotten a bucket out of it. The lead shoots back to four. It's 35 to 31. Kessler drives right corner. Being double teamed, nice behind the back feed. Rump fires a three off the front of the iron. No, and it's all Lady Tigers there for the board. Cheek will push three on two. Cheek stops, pops from the elbow right side. Back heel, no good. Rebound, Holmes strips it away from Lane, works it right around Ashley and puts it off the glass and good. 37-31, largest lead of the day for the Tigers. Scott nearly loses it in the backcourt as soft full court pressure being put on by the Tigers. Now Lane double team, she runs into a wall and she's fouled as too aggressive on the pressure was Valerie Cheek. She'll pick up the personal and slow things down a little bit. 8.22 remaining here in quarter number three. Third on Cheek. And that will spring Haley Browning, the game's leading scorer off the bench. She'll come in at the next opportunity. Zaniah Kessler, angle, quick pass down low, Rump backs down Holmes. She hits the deck hard, puts it off the glass, and good. Holmes was in the restricted area, otherwise that's a charge. But she was too far under the basket, Rump's up to six, and the lead down to four, 37-31. Check that, 37-33. Niasia Holmes, right wing, being hounded by Lane. She'll give off to Roby, who will circle back to the top, gives it back to Lone. Holmes underneath the bucket. She puts it off the window and in, plus the foul. Give and go between Roby and Holmes. The foul on Angle. And Holmes to the line for a three-point play opportunity. Three possessions here in the half and three buckets here for Hawassi. As the substitution we just alluded to being made now. Browning is in for Cheek. And the free throw in and out for Holmes. She has hit one of her six opportunities in the line today. 39-33, Lane, right side of the lane. Floater, no, rebound tipped around. Lane has it under the basket, gets up top for Angle. Reset here for Piedmont. Lane back to Angle, quick pass down low. Kessler spins to her left, up and under move is good. What a nice move by Zania Kessler. She worked around the defender, faked right, then pushed left. She's up to 10. Deficit at four, 39-35, 7.20 to play here in the third. Cross-court pass stolen away by Scott. She's all alone for the layup good. Amaya Scott telegraphed it, jumped in front of it. She's up to 11. Ties for the game high, 39-37. The points off of turnovers coming true there for Piedmont after it worked so well for Hawassi in the second quarter. Jalen Majors, right corner for Roby, loses it, dribbles it off of the foot of Ashley Lane, out of bounds into the Hawassi bench. 
Shot clock at 10 for the Lady Tigers. Under seven to play here in the third quarter. Pittner inbound, gets it back from Roby and drains the triple from the right corner. No one closed out on Pittner. She's been silent all night, but she drains the tray. And a little bit of forward, a little bit of backward there for Piedmont. Deficit is five again as Scott drives and she's fouled. Amaya Scott bumped by Ashley Roby and she was in the act of shooting. So Amaya to the free throw line, 42 to 37, six and a half minutes to play in quarter three. Scott's free throw is up and good. She takes over the leading scorer title in this game with 12, she'll have another. That is another trip down the floor for Hawassi. They're four for four in scoring in this quarter as Scott short on the second, but Lane is there for the offensive rebound. So a chance to make this a three or four point journey here for Piedmont, down by four. 42 to 38, angle to Lane, right wing. Lane wants to get to down low to Rump and does, and she has it on the baseline and she traveled. Just a little bit of a shuffle there, trying to get the feed from Lane. And instead of a three or four point trip, it is a one point trip. Can Piedmont get a stop going on this end? And Zania Kessler trying to get her team going there at the top of the key. Piedmont in a zone here. Ball fake from Pittner. Up top for Roby it goes. Lob left side, backing down Majors. Majors spins to her left, puts up the shot. No, Holmes, the offensive board, put it up and she's fouled. Once Piedmont gets a stop, they can't clear the rebound out. Asia Holmes to the line for a pair. The foul on Arian Rump, she's up to two. Two team fouls aside here, four minutes in. Holmes gets the first. She'll get another here. And she got it. 44 to 38. Piedmont down six here. Scott drives wild towards the bucket. She's bumped from behind, fouled as she put up the shot. Second time in a row that Scott put the pedal down and will go to the free throw line to try and pay it off. That foul on Roby, that's her second in a row. Fouls are racking up here quickly here to start off the second half. Scott cannot get the roll on the first. Too strong in that one. She was short on her last attempt. Looks like she tried to overcompensate there and missed anyway. 5.51 remaining here in the third. Second one for Scott is good. One for two, splits the pair. She's up to 13. 44-39. Piedmont has yet to get a stop defensively here in this half. Browning, cross court, Pittner, up top, Roby between the rings. Eases left, back to the right side, Pittner, lob down low, Holmes being triple teamed, spins around, Rump puts it up, fouled by Hackett, she'll head to the line. Rump got caught flat foot on the low block, Her, Hackett's gonna get whistled for the foul. Tell you what, Piedmont in the early stages of this game, Kept Tawasi out of the paint with ease. Jumped out to a 10-2 lead, but ever since then, the Tigers have figured out the Lady Bruins zone. And it has been living on the block for the Lady Tigers. Second on Hackett. And what do we have here? They called a technical foul? It looks like they have. I think they called Niaja Holmes with a technical foul, and they did. So she must have said something getting ready to shoot those free throws that did not sit well with the officials. So Ashley Lane will shoot two free throws. Mark this one down. 7.27 left in the third, down five. Lane's got to convert both of these here. She gets the first. Holmes will get two free throws when this ends. Megan Price getting the explanation as to why technical was called. Megan Price has also been teed up here tonight. 
Lane gets both. It is a three-point game right now, 44-41, but now Holmes will head to the free throw line to try and give Hawassi back this five-point lead that they just had. The senior out of Macon, Georgia, played at Division I level with Cleveland State for a little bit before eventually winding up in Madisonville, Tennessee. Rolls around and off for the first one. Second one up. No good. Rebound to Hackett. So off of that foul by Hackett, Piedmont gets two points. And down by three, 44-41. Scott drives, puts up the runner. No, rebound loose. Hackett has it, falls down, does the splits. It winds up in Scott's hands. She puts it up and in. Wow, what a carom there. Hackett's going to be helped off the floor as she did the splits and then some. And she is trying to make sure everything is where it needs to be after that tumble. Scott gets the bucket. It's down to one. Somehow that basketball wound up off the hands of Hackett and to Scott on the left block as Hackett was falling down and got chicken winged. 44-43, 5.13 to go here in the third. Scott has the last five points here for Piedmont from the floor. Still looking for that stop defensively here. Haley Browning bounces at baseline over to Majors. Majors trapped in the corner, goes to Roby. Back to Browning and over to Majors again. Pulls up, now drives right side, puts it up off the window and knocks it through. Piedmont's biting on the ball fake here. 46-43, Scott drives full length of the floor. Too strong in the transition bucket. Roby will counter for the Tigers. Roby for Hawassi, nearly fouled from behind from Scott. Good thing that wasn't called. That would have been four on Amaya. Right corner, Browning thought about the three. Now up top, Roby has got, she got Kessler in the air, goes to the free throw line and puts up the runner and knocks it in. That's two times in a row where Kessler got caught in the air. Roby gets her second bucket, back to five, just like that after Piedmont got it down to one. 48-43, four minutes to play here in the third. Hackett left wing to Rumpf at the elbow. Rump goes left wing, Lane spins to her left, tough runner off the glass and good. Nice move there by Ashley Lane. Tornadoes from the left elbow, puts it high off the window and good. She's up to 14, 48-45. Piedmont's been able to score here. It's this end of the floor that has been the issue here to start. Browning, left corner, up top, Roby. Quick pass down low, Holmes over Hackett. Shot no good. Hackett might have gotten a piece of it. There's your stop. Now can Piedmont consolidate it and climb within one or tie it? 3.25 to play. Timeout called by Kayla Money to get a couple of subs in because we hadn't had a dead ball here in a while with 3.23 to go here in this third quarter. 30-second timeout called by Piedmont, down 48-45 to Hawassi. They were down by four at the break. And it has been trade and punches here in this third frame, but the Lady Bruins have only been able to shave one point off of this deficit from halftime. Amaya Scott with 15 to lead the way. Ashley Lane with 14, Zanaya Kessler with 10, the three and double figures for PIU. Jalen Majors and Haley Browning both sit at 11 for Hawassi. Piedmont will inbounds right in front of me here on the near sideline, right at the timeline. It'll be Lane, Cumberbatch, Angle, Rump, and Kessler on the floor here for Piedmont, so a little bit of a bigger lineup for Caleb Money out of this timeout. He wanted to get some size in there, and now he has. Ashley Lane to Rump, dribble drive in the paint, puts up the runner, too strong, rebound, pinballs around, and winds up in the hands of Ashley Roby. Good play design, but Rump couldn't finish the shot. Now turnover nearly committed there on the opposite end as the pass from Haley Browning was Deflected by Kessler, then those two went for a tie-up. And what do we have here? 
I think jump ball should have been called, and it was. It'll stay with Hawassi. One of the officials going to the scores table just to make it very clear that it stays with the Lady Tigers with 3.02 to play here in the third. Inbounds, Hawassi. That possession arrow's got to change here as Browning, her shot's blocked from the left elbow. Kessler got a piece of it, wound up in the hands of Rumpf. Lane to Kessler, right baseline. Kessler up and under, hook shot, tough shot, no good, and a whistle and a foul underneath that's going to go on PIU. Kessler tried that up and under scoop shot, but she was a good eight feet away from the bucket, and there were two Lady Tigers in the way. And then Cumberbatch gets whistled for the foul and the rebound, her second. Both teams with four fouls. Next foul into the bonus for both here for the final 235. Browning tries to get down low for Holmes. Stolen away by Angle. Back-to-back -back turnovers forced by the Piedmont defense. And now Caleb Money says slow it down. That possession arrow needs to change. It's still facing Hawassi's direction after that last jump ball. 217 remaining here in the third. 48-45 Lady Tigers. Up top, Monifa Angle. To Kessler at the elbow. Bounces it over Engel. Open for three. Got it. Big shot for Monifa Engel from the right wing. Ties the game at 48. Under two to play as Mackenzie Broadway back in. Roby looking to answer way off the mark from the top. And the rebound punch long to Kessler. She'll hang on to it and says, let's slow down and get the lead here. Lane brings it up to the right. Buck 40 to go here in the third. Piedmont looking for their first lead of the half. Angle, foul line extended right. Wants to get to Lane, left wing, and does. Lane, step back, three, in and out. Rebound fought for. Holmes plucks it away from Cumberbatch. Halfway down and out for Ashley on the step back. At the free throw line, Jalen Majors leaves it off. Browning at the top of the key. Quick pass down low. Holmes underneath for an easy two. Is losing sight of Niaja Holmes here in this second half. She's been kind of the straw that serves the drink offensively. She's up to nine. The lead back up to two for Hawassi, 50 to 48, under a minute to go. Quick pass, Kessler wasn't ready for it, low block. She gets it anyway, puts it up off the glass, no. And a whistle and an offensive foul. It's gonna be on Kessler. She pushed Holmes out of the way. Kessler has had a ragged game here. And Kayla Money loses the jacket and is not pleased. That's the third on Zanaya Kessler. A sophomore with 10 points, but not quite the sure-handed decision-making that we're used to seeing from Zanaya. And that foul will put Holmes at the free throw line for two. 54-48. Fifty-four point five seconds to go, and I wonder if Caleb Money might have gotten teed up there as well because he said some things very loudly. Whether he disagreed with the call or not. They got a foul up on the board for Alicia Cumberbatch as well, so might be Cumberbatch. Got the technical foul, and then Kessler got the personal, or maybe it's the other way around. Either way, Jalen Majors is at the free throw line. She'll get the first. These are the technical free throws. Second one up and good, and uh, this is a huge moment of this game right here. There have been two technicals called on Hawassi in this one, and now one called on Piedmont. Now the ball's coming down the other way. It was, an, oh, it was an offensive foul, so despite heading into the bonus there, that won't be free throws. So Hawassi will have possession now after the technicals. Cumberbatch has taken a seat. So it's 52, 48, 40 seconds to play in this third quarter. Roby has it. She'll leave it off for Browning. Now swing it over Broadway. Up top. Kathleen Alomar back in, playing catch across court. Browning wants a three, short from the right corner. Following up the shot is Alomar. She streaks right to the bucket for the easy putback. 
Four point trip there. 54 48. Kessler can't handle it in the backcourt. She's tied up. And a timeout's going to get called by head coach Kayla Money. This is a problematic close to this third quarter for PIU. As we have seen ebbs and flows throughout the game for the Lady Bruins, they are kind of three minutes on, three minutes off. And it's been kind of an issue all season long, just trying to find consistent high-level play for a good bulk of time. And over the last 60 seconds or so of game clock, it has been sloppy. 18.7 to play here in the third quarter. Bruins are down six, 54 to 48. They had this game tied at 48 just about 90 seconds ago. But Hawassi cranked up the pressure yet again and have opened up in a quick 6-0 run. Now backcourt inbounds here, and Hawassi will show pressure. There's nobody in the forecourt right now for either squad. Now Shamanique Pearson will do honors and get into the front court. Lane looking that way, and she'll bounce it over to the backcourt for Scott instead. Shot clock dark. Scott's just able to get it across the timeline. Robba down low. Kessler's all alone for the easy bucket. Nice feed from Scott. Kessler's able to bank it home. Seven seconds to play, 54 to 50. Browning right corner. Up top, Roby deep three at the buzzer off the side of the glass. No. And the third quarter ends 54 to 50. Well, with all the chaos in that third quarter, we're back to where we started the half. A four point deficit for the Lady Bruins. 10 minutes to work into it. Back with a fourth after this on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Lane, push shot, no, a rebound. Monifa Engel has it for Piedmont, and she'll bring it up the floor herself. Piedmont gets a stop, which has been few and far between here in this second half. Now they got to capitalize on that. Sophie Barnes in for the second time tonight. She's in the left corner. Engel has it at the top of the key, spins left as she drives on the lane, puts up the shot off the side of the rim, no, and Mackenzie Broadway with the board for Hawassi. Missed opportunity there, good drive by Engel. She just couldn't finish it off. Right corner, Alomar just fires a three. Glancing blow, too strong, and the rebound tracked down on the near side by Scott. Now she loses it to Browning, and she travels with it. They both hit the deck, and the traveling is violation is called. So the Lady Tigers will get the basketball back. Hawassi pressures the ball at nearly every opportunity. And it has caused Piedmont a lot of fits here. Left corner, Broadway wants a three in and out. It's all home, so the rebound puts it up. She's fouled. There was nobody on the left side of the block for Piedmont to try and box out. And Engel finally closed out to foul and make that a more difficult opportunity there for Niaja. Holmes, 5'10", senior out of Macon, Georgia. She has had a huge part in this second half. She misses the first. She has had a lot of struggle at the free throw line. Second one, no good. Long rebound, it's Ashley Lane who has it in the lane. 
And again being pressured off the miss. Kathleen Alomar causing her problems, but Lane gets it across the line. She didn't know what to do with it once she got to the top of the key. She tried to look like she wanted to pull up for the shot, and then she lost the handle. It kicked to the far corner. Looks like it'll stay with Piedmont as it went off of Broadway. But a little bit of indecision there by Ashley Lane on the break. 8.46 remaining in the game. No one scored yet here in the fourth. 54 to 50. Scott inbounds Lane, right corner for the three. Too strong, rebound pops around, still loose in the paint. It's picked down by Majors, and a whistle and a foul is called. I think Amaya Scott might have jumped over the back for that one. Said it's Sophie Barnes. Barnes will get her first, second on the team already here, just 120 into this final quarter. It was Kayla Money, head coach, that was teed up in that third quarter during that last stretch in the final minute or so. And Alicia Cumberbatch had the personal foul, so both coaches have a technical in this one. Owasi with the basketball as Scott bumps right into Majors looking for the basketball. Tried to jump in front of the feed, but Amaya's going to get her fourth personal foul. And that'll put Amaya on the bench. Well, she got through the third quarter without getting the fourth, and she was pretty aggressive as well. So that's a bit of a win for Kayla Money, but try to go a little bit longer with her out there. She's going to have to take a seat, and Zanaya Kessler comes back in. Owasi basketball, Alomar right wing. Fires cross court, it's just intercepted by Ashley Lay and looking like a defensive back, just going up for that one. And now Arian Rump trying to get across the timeline. She threw it to no one in particular. Winds up in the hands of Majors. Now she'll break in for Hawassi. Majors spins right, puts it up off the window, front of the iron, no. Rebound, Broadway has it off the glass and good. Some indecision here to start the fourth for Piedmont. It's resulted in a couple of sloppy plays, 56 to 50. Barnes has it, nearly loses it right wing. Lane has it back. How's Hawassi not foul all the time with this level of defense? They are swarming the basketball. Now Rump has it, high to the left. And they're gonna whistle a quick jump ball. It'll stay with Piedmont as Alomar reached in and tied it up. Kessler to inbound, she'll go into the backcourt for Lane. 7.36 to play, 56 to 50, Piedmont down. Lane stops right baseline, gives to a cutting Kessler in the paint, runner good. What a find by Elaine, and what a finish by Zaniah. She's got 14. First points of the quarter for Piedmont, down by four again, 56-52. In the corner, Nyasia Holmes swings the left side, Broadway. Mackenzie Broadway goes right, Majors to Holmes, low block, low, Holmes being double teamed. She throws it away. Kessler reached in, and I think Kayla Money thought a jump ball was going to get called, but then Holmes was able to spring it free, but threw it right to her own bench. There's a turnover forced, and now the Bruins looking to cut it to two or one. Angle inside the arc left side. She'll get to Rump with the elbow. Jumper good from 18. It is a two-point game, 56-54. Crowd getting up here in Winston-Salem, lob down low, looking for Holmes, and a whistle and a foul. Arian Rumpf had that pass telegraphed, and she jumped up for it, and a whistle is going to be called on Arian, as the official is going to say they were she was clearing Holmes out from under the basket. Debatable, to put it kindly. That's already four team fouls on Piedmont. Hawassi has none. Off the inbounds, Browning right corner, up top, Roby's open for three, back of the iron, no, rebound loose, still loose at the baseline, out of bounds it goes, it stays with Hawassi, it kicks off an angle, fighting for the loose basketball, she couldn't rein it in. And the Piedmont defense trying to bend but not break in this possession, down by two here with six and a half to play. Haley Browning. Up top, Ashley Roby twisted her right leg in the first quarter, came back though and has played pretty well. Running the show, Roby lobs, Holmes cutting to the basket, layup good. Only so many opportunities that this team can be given, especially for Holmes down low. 
Back to four, 58-54. Rump drives right of the lane, puts it up off the glass, and good. Holmes hit the deck, no foul was called. Back to two, Rump has 10. 58-56, 5.45 to play. Ashley Roby, another lob down low. Holmes has it under the basket. She's up, she was blocked, it's called a foul. That was a clean block from back here. And the official on the baseline, the other side of the play, called Arian Rump for her fourth foul. And that will send Holmes to the free throw line. They have had no answer for Niasia down low. Well, that wasn't much of a foul. That was anticipating contact more than anything. Holmes good at the free throw line. She'll get another. And now Arian Rump playing with four. Amaya Scott has four. Amaya's on the bench, but Kayla Money is going to have to roll with Rump here the rest of these next couple of minutes, it looks like. Two for two at the line for Holmes, and she comes out. Shamanique Pearson comes back in. 60 to 56. Piedmont just can't quite get over the hump here in the second half. They had it tied late in the third and couldn't finish it off to get the lead. Lane to Kessler. Kessler up fakes the three, nearly travels. Moves to the top of the key. Back to Lane at the wing. Lane with 10, cross court angle, right wing, fires the three, got it! Two big triples for Renifa in the third, down to one, 60 to 59. Kayla Money urging his defense on. Jalen Majors, top of the key to Broadway. Up top for Haley Browning to Pearson. Right side for Majors. In the corner, Browning for three. Partially deflected and misses everything. Rump got a hand on it. Lane has it. Piedmont looks for the lead with 4.44 to play. Lane taking her time at the top. Goes to Angle at the elbow to Rump. Left elbow. Rump back to Angle. With 12 on the timer, back to Rump. Deep two jumper for the lead, no good. Lane has the rebound, right baseline. Trapped down there, needs some help. Goes up top for Angle, back down low. Kessler to the bucket, layup, good! And the foul! Kessler kept her position after the offensive rebound, and she paid it off. And she'll head to the line for a three-point play after this timeout. 4.20 remaining, 61-60. Piedmont back in front on the Bruin Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others do. One, Hawassi 60, 420 to play. Zaniah Kessler to try and complete the three-point play. No good off the back heel. She's got 16. Piedmont in the lead for the first time in the second half. The foul is on Majors. And here we go down the stretch. Piedmont back in front. Ashley Roby for Hawassi. To the right corner, Broadway. Back up top high. Roby to the left side for Browning to Majors in the corner. Back up top, Roby. And to Broadway with five on the shot clock. Drives baseline, leaves it off. Browning open for the three right corner. Missed everything. Angle has it. Two in a row that Browning has missed from the corner. Piedmont up one. Lane with the basketball under four to play. It was a four-point deficit at halftime. Four-point deficit after three. After Piedmont led by as many as eight in the first half. 
Now they've come back here. And looking to expand this lead out. Rumpf at the elbow to Lane. Six in the shot clock. Angle back to Rumpf. Fires the three. In and out. Rebound loose. Still on the far side. Roby has it. She'll push for the Tigers down one. 3.15 remaining. Roby backs it out. Will slow it down. Substitutions coming in for the Tigers. The next opportunity. Browning right corner. Tries to dribble around. Rumpf pulls it up. Up top for... Jalen Major, she's bumped and fouled the free throw line. And she will head to the line. The foul on Sophie Barnes, her second. Majors ties the game with the first. As Hawassi shooting the rest of the way, Piedmont Still has work to do in the foul game. Hawassi with just one team foul in this quarter. Majors, second one good. Tigers back in front. She's got 15. 62, 61, under three to play. Zania Kessler brings it up floor. It will hand off to Lane. Lane left elbow to Rump. She's been huge here in this fourth quarter. Just pulls up for the jumper. That's not the shot Kayla Money wanted. It falls off the back of the rim. And it's all Hawassi there for the rebound. 2.35 to play. Roby goes right side. Valerie Cheek back in. Roby right side again. Majors down low. Holmes back in. Holmes spins left off the front of the iron. She puts up the shot. It's short. Kessler clears it away. Bruins look for the lead again, down by one. Needing wins in their next two to get to the postseason and their final home game of the year. Rumpf, baseline, off the glass, good, and the foul. Holmes gets the personal. Rumpf shoots Piedmont back in front and is at the line. Arian Rumpf with 12, looking for point 13, a two-point lead here. Got it. Third on Holmes, second on Hawassi with 2.03 to play, 64-62 PIU. Arian Rumpf has been a monster in this fourth quarter. Broadway nearly trips left corner. Roby has a top of the key. Majors to the right corner, whistle and a foul. As Cheek was going for the errant pass and Rump jumped right over the back and fouled her. And that will do it for Arian Rump. She is fouled out and that is massive. Alicia Cumberbatch will come in in place of Arian, who will finish the night with 13. And this team isn't in front here in the fourth without Arian and her jump shot ability. Monifa Engel with a couple threes in this fourth as well have been huge. Cheek for two at the line, just two points on the day. She gets the first. The sophomore out of Toledo Plains, Tennessee, makes it 64-63. She'll shoot for the tie right here. Second one, got it. Free throws have been an issue for Hawassi all night. They've made their last four. Tied at 64, 140 to play. Lane, Cumberbatch, Engel, Scott, and Kessler on the floor for PIU. Cumberbatch has the top of the key to Scott. Too tall in the lane. It's off her hands, and it goes to Hawassi. Majors will break. Majors into the lane, left side, bumped, goes up top. Cheek wide open for three, no good. Rebound, Holmes gets in front of Cumberbatch, puts it off the glass, no. Still loose, the tie up, who's got it? Jump ball, it goes to Hawassi. As Lane and Holmes battled for it, Lane tried to wrestle it away and could not. Naija Holmes has been sucking in every rebound here tonight on the offensive glass. 116 to play, tied at 64. Inbound baseline right goes to Cheek. Majors to Roby and Ashley Roby, the point guard, will set it up here as we get towards a minute left. Roby to Cheek. 
Cross court, Bro McKenzie Broadway to Roby. Shot clock to 10, Broadway still on the perimeter to Roby. With seven, with six, with five, Broadway right wing, one-handed three. Oh my goodness, she got it. From the right wing, a deep triple for McKenzie Broadway. That shot did not look good out of her hands, but she got it to go, 67-64 with 46 seconds remaining. That's just the second basket of the night for McKenzie Broadway. A whistle and a timeout has been called here. I think Kayla Money called it. And it's a full timeout. We'll take it to final 48 seconds remaining. 67-64 Hawassi on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Do the Lady Bruins have one more comeback in them here tonight? Down by three with 48 seconds to play after a shot clock beating desperation three by Mackenzie Broadway. Put Hawassi back in front. Piedmont with the basketball, needing a quality possession here. You don't need a three right off the bat here. There's still plenty of time to work with. Lane will start running the show between the rigs. A lot of fouls to give here, too, if Piedmont still needs to play catch up. Right corner angle for three. Got it! Just like that, the game's tied back up. Her third triple of the quarter. Shot clock and game clock, a three and a half second differential. Timeout, Megan Price to draw up this play. Monifa Angle with 11. Nine of them here in the fourth. And Piedmont with new life, tied at 67. After this, on the Bruin Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Twenty seven point six seconds remaining all tied at sixty seven Piedmont and Hawassi the Lady Tigers of the basketball to my left inbound to Roby Majors Holmes Broadway and Cheek the remaining five on the floor for the Tigers three and a half second differential shot and game clock Roby with ten on the shot clock thirteen on the game clock. Broadway right wing, down to seven, down to six. Cheek right corner, up top Roby, push shot from the free throw line, good. 6.2 seconds remaining. Hawassi back in front, 69-67. Timeout, Kayla Money. As Piedmont will have one more shot at things here. To tie and send to overtime or to win it. We'll take a break as well. Stay tuned. The finish next on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Piedmont International University invites you to an evening of worship with the Vertical Worship Band.
Like a Worship in concert Friday, February 16th, 7 p.m. at Triad Baptist Church in Kernersville. An evening with Vertical Worship, Friday, February 16th, hosted by Piedmont International University. For tickets or more information, visit piedmontu.edu. Hawassi 69, Piedmont International 67. 6.2 seconds to play. Lady Bruins with the basketball in the front court. Possession arrow goes to the Lady Bruins. Angle to trigger. Looking for Lane, she has it in the paint. She loses it, it's stripped away by Roby. She's breaking with two, with one, lobs it up floor. She's fouled to the timeline with .4 seconds remaining. Piedmont with a shot to tie or win and they can't get a shot away. And Ashley Roby to the free throw line to ice this one for the Lady Tigers. Roby with the floater just a couple moments ago to give Hawassi the lead. She hits the first with .4 seconds remaining. That is catch and shoot territory if this is still a three-point game. Roby, second, good. That should do it. 71-67. Lane to inbound, Kessler cannot get it off. And that will close up shop here tonight. A heartbreaker for Piedmont International as they fall 71-67 to the Hawassi Lady Tigers. Stay tuned, folks. The post-game show is next. We'll chat with Coach Caleb Money and more. 71-67, your final score. Hawassi wins it here in Winston-Salem on the Bruin Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Over the past few years, Piedmont International University has been moving up the ladder in both state and national rankings in a variety of categories. I am excited to announce yet another award as Piedmont was recently recognized for having one of the top 10 best online master's degrees in leadership in the entire United States. Other universities in the top 10 list include schools like Johns Hopkins University, uh, Gonzaga University. An award like this does not come without an excellent curriculum, outstanding faculty, affordable tuition, and flexible online delivery that utilizes cutting edge innovation and maximizes the use of technology and the internet. Piedmont's faculty are noted for their professional guidance and instruction, as well as their relational care for each and every student. Our students are the most important ingredient to the success of our leadership programs. And graduates of these programs are doing amazing things, as many have been recognized for their, uh, their exceptional leadership as school administrators, ministry leaders, uh, medical practitioners, military personnel, pastors, entrepreneurs, business leaders. Allow me to share just a few examples of what some of our leadership graduates are doing. The list includes the CEO of a major automobile manufacturing factory here in the United States, the chancellor of a nationally known public university, the national HR director for a major grocery store chain, the administrators of a number of significant schools, and pastors of many key significant churches. Our graduates are demonstrating outstanding leadership in key roles across the country and all around the world. And we couldn't be more proud. Seventy-one to sixty-seven, the final score tonight. Hawassi wins here over Piedmont International, and Coach Gala Money joins us now from the floor. Coach, this was a back and forth, tight knit, hard nosed battle between these two. I think we kind of expected it would be, and 
in the end, just a couple more plays by the Lady Tigers did the damage. Yeah, that's true. They uh, they kept working hard. Uh, they're a top 20 RPI team in our NCCA Division I. Um, and I knew it was going to be tough coming in because we battled with them up there. Uh, just, man, just couldn't execute that last six seconds. Yeah, it, it, Hawassi was swarming defensively a lot of the night, so it, it seems a little bit fitting that it's that s a swarming kind of turnover that they forced there to to close up shop in this one. What were they doing offensively to get Niaja Holmes to become that much of a factor? It really seemed like the offense started running through her. It really did. I, they skipped past very well, uh, and I honestly I think we jumped to the ball the best we ever have this year as far as while the ball's in the air and moving rather than waiting for them to catch it and close out on them. Uh, however, they just seemed to find ways to get her in there. Um, we weren't sealing properly and fronting on the correct side, and it was really leaving a lot of open gaps, and therefore there's opening a lot of lanes for them. You have to be proud of the effort here by this team. Where they came close a couple of times that second half to taking the lead. They tied it once late in that third quarter but couldn't quite get over the hump. And then the, the player to your right there, Monifa Engel, she starts un uncorking from three, and all of a sudden this team's back in it and has the lead. This team never gave up despite how tough of a defense this was to play. I'm equally proud of everyone that had a jersey on that locker, on the, on the bench today. Um, and, and Mo really stepped up her confidence. It has been eating her alive in the last couple of games, and, and she allows it to hurt her on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, and I was really happy to see her get it going and keeping her head up. I only had to take her out once to tell her to keep her head up, uh, and that's, that's what was great. And Mo, I mean, man, she can shoot it like that, uh, and as long as her confidence is there, I don't mind her taking it. It was certainly there. She tied the game late there with about 20 seconds to play. But in the end, it's Hawassi that comes in and gets the four-point win. Coach Money, heck of an effort despite the result here tonight. Yes, sir. Missing uh, regionals by four points is tough. Uh, but uh, from what we, where this program was, these ladies have brought it to where it needs to be. Uh, nothing on my part. All of these ladies that have decided to put on this jersey and decided to play as hard as they could for this university. That's to get all the credit for what the season that we've had. Well said there, Coach. Congrats on the season here with the ups and the downs, but it was a heck of a year here for your girls. Thank you, Corey. I appreciate it. That's Coach Caleb Money here after the 71-67 loss here to the hands of the Hawassi Lady Tigers. We'll bring in Monifa Angle now, our player of the game, brought to you by Gateway Pharmacy of Kernersville. Mo Monifa finishes with... 11 points in this one, including a huge fourth quarter to get this team back in and get the lead. Mo, we just talked to your coach about how, the, how it's been up and down for you this year and staying the confidence level there. Your fourth quarter there, what were you feeling in that fourth? What were you seeing out there to let you start flying like that? Well, I knew this was our last game, and I didn't want to lose. And, and it, no doubt it's a tough result here, but to, to be able to bring this team back like you were able to in the fourth, that's got to be a little bit of something you can take away from this one. Well, personally, I think I play hard because, like I said, I knew this was the last game, but it wasn't only me. <clears throat> I wanted to include my teammates in it, too. What has this year been like for you playing with some of these girls, some of them for the first time here this year? A lot of them, all of, the, all of you guys were in double figures here tonight, had terrific games here. What has this season been like for you playing with this club? Well, it's been up and down because some of us upperclassmen, some of us are coming from high school, so it's like a different pace. But we've been trying to get in the gym and work with each other and do what we can do. We kind of saw a little bit of everything from this team, it felt like, here tonight when this team was on point early on this game, this, that quick start for you guys, and then that fourth quarter making that run take the lead we saw a lot of what this team has been able to do a lot this year and you're a big reason why it was, it was a lot of fun to watch that in that fourth quarter from you and it has to be has to feel good where despite the loss your final home game here this year to have a performance like that despite the result this is bittersweet but no doubt, Mo. It, it, it's tough, no doubt, here tonight. But congrats on the performance. Congrats on the effort. Congrats on what the season has been for you and this team. It has been up and down, but when it's been up, it's been really fun to watch. Congratulations. Thank you. That's Monifa Angle, our player of the game here tonight. Finishes with 11 points. Gateway Pharmacy of Kernersville, North Carolina, brings us today's player of the game. 71-67, to the final score. Hawassi wins it here in the final home game of the year. We'll take a break and take a look at the final numbers after this here on the Bruin Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live.
71-67. Hawassi a winner over PIU here tonight in the final home game of the regular season for the Lady Bruins. This will also mean a 5-10 and 10 mark. There will be no regional play upcoming here for PIU as they need to win their final two games of the season. They fall just shy here in Winston-Salem. Corey Glore back with you. Let's take a quick look at the final numbers for PIU in this one. Zanaya Kessel led the way with 16 points. She was the game-high scorer in this one. Amaya Scott with 15 to go along with Ashley Lane's 14. Arian Rump, 13. And Monifa Engel, our player of the game, with 11. All five starters finished in double figures. No one else was able to score here for PIU in this one. Lady Bruins will head on the road on Monday to finish out the season at Appalachian Bible College. The men are back home for their final game of the regular season Friday night against Central International. Live coverage will begin at 6.55. Tip-off here. Dave Shook on the call will be at 7 o'clock for the final home regular season game of the men's basketball team coming up Friday night. I want to thank Mason Cox, the producer and engineer of the broadcast here tonight, and everyone here at PIU for getting everything set up this evening. So I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in here tonight. For Mason Cox, I am Corey Glor. Thank you very much for watching this evening. And once again, your final score, Hawassi 71, Piedmont International 67. You heard it all right here on the Bruin Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Good night, everyone.